Uh, welcome, my dear students. This is your teacher, Dr. Usama Kashwa, and uh, this is the third lecture, uh, uh, a new lecture in project management, and we are handling the project management from many aspects. And we are moving now forward for new aspects of the uh, project management. Uh, so uh, let's start our lecture now and say that the software of project management is difficult than other engineering project management because the software, because the product is intangible here. That's the software. You cannot touch it. The software development process is not standardized. There is no num num uh, like patterns for the software. Many software projects are one off projects. Okay. Project management activities. What are the project management activities? What are those project management activities? They are the proposal writing or report writing and presentation, writing and communication skills. They are team formation. The project management, those are the activities of the project, project management. Team formation. What do we mean by team formation? Personal selection and the evaluation. And we will have a part about the uh, uh, the selection and the evaluation of humans uh, for project management. Project cost estimation. Also, the project active management activities include the costs of the project, how much it will be. They have to estimate it because it's a future work. For that reason, they have to estimate it. Project monitoring and services and reviews. So also monitoring, like controlling the project. And that's what we talked before. And we said, the project management is actually concerned about uh, putting the standards, measuring the actual performance, then comparing the performance or the actual uh, uh, performance with the standards to check out if there are gaps or no, to correct the gaps in case there are gaps. And also report writing and representation or presentation, those are one of the uh, project management activities. Actually, we had this question before, but why not? We can stop here now for the moment and go to a slide and say, what are the project man ma management activities? What are, just to remind us with this question, what are the main M-A-I-N project, P-R-O-J-E-C-T project management Activities. What are the main project management activities? And to answer this question, actually, you will have here about five minutes. We'll stop here around five minutes for getting the answer from you guys. Uh, you can send me the answers on Google Chats. Where is the chat box here? Like this one, you can send it in this Google or the chat box. You can send it on the chat box. So, okay, so what are the main uh, project management activities? What are the activities of the project management? So this is your question and we'll leave here like around five minutes in this area.
complete our work on this file. And here we go. Okay. Now the team formation. Team formation is a point very important uh, because working in project management is always in teams. So a project manager success starts with creating the best team possible and having the right people and the right role. May not be possible to appoint the ideal people to work on a project. Yes, project budgets may not allow for the use of highly paid stuff. So sometimes, uh, because of the money or the cost constraints, we talk about the triangle, including the cost cons constraints. Uh, you might don't grab or recruit to your own uh, project team the, the best qualified qualify people because of the, they are highly paid. So you try to avoid this point. Stuff with the appropriate experiences may not be available also. They might immigrate somewhere else or whatever. Any organization may wish to develop employee skills on a software project. Anyhow, managers have to work within the constraints, especially when they are shortage of trained staff. So I will work at the way it is here in front of me because that's what I have. So that's what I have because of the limits of the cost, the cost constraints will let me not bring or not grab uh, to the project all the best all, all my dreams no i will be according i will act according to what's in, available for me right now the resources available for me more people manages in okay so project planning like we talked before and we said about the project planning most uh, probably the most time consuming project management activity continuous activity from initial concept through to system delivery Plan must be regularly revised. This is very important sentence. We must always uh, revise the plans uh, as new information become available. Various different types of plan may be developed to support the main software project plan that is concerned with schedule and budget. Because the main, the main work uh, of the software's project plan is the schedule and the budgeting. Those are the one which is done as a software. Okay, types of project plan. We have a quality plan that will stress on the quality. The quality is a continued process from the start of the project till the end. So quality plan describe the quality procedures and the standards that will be used in the project. Okay, so th this is the quality plan. Quality is a philosophy. Start before the start of the production and ended after the sale services within the phase of even it's ended after the sale is done or after the uh, uh, project is closed. Satisfying the people needs is very important with a high quality with high quality performance in everything and based on the quality standards as well. Validation plan, describe the approach resources and schedule used for system validation. This is the second type of project plan, validation plan. The third type is configuration management plan. Describe the configuration management procedures and the structure of the used uh, that must be used. What kind of structure I will use for achieving my uh, project management or project uh, plan? What is the uh, procedures which will use the structure? How the organization structure there? Is it a, like a tall structure or a flat structure? Okay. Maintenance plan. Also, this is another kind of plan. Uh, predicts the maintenance requirements of the system, maintenance cost, and so the plan, it needs costs. The costs, some of it is due to the maintenance, a maintenance cost. So I will put a maintenance plan. Also, I'm using tools, I'm using machines, all this, and I need spare parts, and I need uh, 
service for the equipment and the machinery so that the depreciation will be lower. It won't be with a high depreciation or it might stop if I didn't make a maintenance plan. Those machineries might stop and not work or break. So this will cause me troubles. So in that case, I have to put a maintenance plan. Staff plan, the staff or the human resource. Staff, staff in any company is the human resource of this company. Staff plan development describe how will skills and the experience of the project team member will be developed. So it's including recruiting human resource, recruit, recruit, recruiting the skillful uh, people, uh, hire them, train them, promote them, put them for pay, and put them for the pension plan and the leave plan, and including all their words, putting for them the job analysis, and put for them their job description, and all these are included into the rates, the income, the pay, all these uh, is regarding the staff plan. The, the needs, my needs from the skillful uh, staff with quantity and the quality. As example, I need three engineers with a high qualified with master degree in software and with experience of 10 years at least. So this is quality and quantity. Quantity, three engineers. And the quality is that uh, they are highly trained uh, with great experience of more than 10 years experience. They have more than bachelor in, as example, they have master or PhD in softwares. So those are the types of project plan. And I will stop here to have another question now and say, what are the types of project plan? What are the types of project plan? What are the types of project plan? We might stay here for around five minutes. And the answer on the previous page on the slides or PowerPoints, you will find the answer there. Also, let me tell you that you can send your answers on shared books. Here in the shared books, you can answer it, send your answers here. What are the types of project plan? Remember, it is on the page, uh, the precede page. Those are the types of project plan. You can also Google search. We'll wait here for around five minutes to get your answers, my dears. Then we'll move forward. Thank you.
So we are back now to the next. Um, we have the types of project plan and we are done for this. So we'll go now to uh, objective of project plan. What is the objective of the project plan? The project plan is set out the resource available to the project. We need to know the available resources, to the, project, the work breakdown. So those are the things which we'll talk about in the project plan. Uh, the resource available, the work breakdown, a schedule for the work. So when we talk about the project plan, we talk about the these three topics. Again, I would say the resources available, the resources mean the raw materials, the money, the capital, how far I have, how much I have for the project, the work breakdown, parts of the work and the consequence of the work, the serial, dividing the work into stops and stations and phases, a schedule for the work and this also uh, related to. It's all about estimation. Uh, so it's how much the resource available, the work breakdown and the time. So it's all about how much. Structure of the project plan. What we will do in the project plan, how we will build it. There is introduction. The, the introduction is the objective and the constraints. Objective, what we want to do building as example, the constraints we have 100 or $1 million. Only we have constraints of time, we have constraints of uh, costs, and we have constraints of scope. Project organization, team, the team who I have, the team who will work with me. We have risk analysis, and we will co cover the risk analysis in the mathematical part of these uh, lectures. Hardware and software resources requirements. Of course, any kind of project will, must have the hardware and software resources. Software are the programs and computers and the people who will work on the softwares. Hardware and the other things which is tangible and you can touch it with your hand. Software is intangible, you cannot touch it, but hardware are the thing, the stuff, the solid stuff that will help for creating this uh, project plan. Work breakdown, what do you mean by the work breakdown? Project activities, milestones, and deliverable of each activity. So the work breakdown include the project activities, the milestones, and deliverable uh, of each activity. And we'll have now a video about what is the meaning of the work breakdown. Project schedule, dependencies between activities. So like as example, I can start building the second floor in a building without building first the ground floor. So this is dependency. The second floor depend on the ground floor. Activities, time needed to reach each milestone and the allocation, the time for each. For example, the ground floor will need 15 days. Starting from the 16 days, I can start building the second floor and so on. Milestones and the allocation of people or activities as well. Uh, monitoring and reporting mechanisms. How, how, what are the figures of the reports? How they look like? Define the reports that should be produced because each stage of the uh, project uh, the project, each stage of the project need different kinds of reports and different kinds of the documentations and documentary uh, process. When they should be produced and the project mechanism used in it. We'll come to a very important part, which is the risk management. What do you mean by the risk management? Uh, before we go to the risk management, we need only to know uh, work breakdown, project work breakdown. We'll see a small video about the project work. Uh, work break down in a project. 
or project work breakdown. <sighs> let's take uh, okay let's take it as it is like this way and we'll see our videos about it let's just see this video about the work breakdown structure We will see actually many videos about the work breakdown. What's the problems that accurately defined and possible solutions have been discussed and then decided upon and a project risk plan has been developed, an accurate estimate of the required resources and cost to complete the project is the next step. The leading cause of project failure is inaccurately estimating the time requirement and the cost involved with completing the project. A wonderful tool you can use to help with estimating is called the work breakdown structure. The concept behind the work breakdown structure is very simple. It requires... Uh... It requires you to break down complex tasks into smaller, like I'm telling you as example, if you are going to build a house, uh, that means that you will do a stages, um, like a hierarchy of stages, and each stage is having phases, like each phase, what you will do then, until you reach a point where you can no longer subdivide the task. So in this point, this is the end, you cannot divide subdivided more than this this is very proper for a person or for a department to do this part of the main project on behalf of them okay requires you to break down complex tasks into smaller tasks until you reach a point where you can no longer subdivide these tasks at this point you'll have several smaller tasks that'll be easier to estimate the time requirement and the cost involved. The work breakdown structure helps you to see visually all of the components that make up the tasks that ultimately make up the entire project. But let's take a look at a simple example of how this might work. I wanna use a simple example just to illustrate how the work breakdown structure works. So I'm gonna use the project of cleaning my room. To clean my room, I might begin by picking up the clothes off the floor, and then I might vacuum the floor. Once I vacuumed, I may decide to dust the furniture, and then I may decide to wash the windows and then wash the walls. These are all subtasks of cleaning my room. There are also smaller tasks that make up the subtasks. For example, to complete the subtask of vacuuming, I would need to get the vacuum out of the closet. I'd need to plug it in, turn it on, and then push it around the room. And then when I'm finished, I'd need to put it away. Now notice that it really doesn't matter at this point what order I put the tasks in. That's not the point of the work breakdown structure. A work breakdown structure doesn't show the sequence in which the work is performed. The sequencing is determined when a schedule is developed and we'll cover scheduling next. The main idea- Hello my dears. So here in this stage, the breakdown, it doesn't care about, uh, about which stage or which phase will come first or which one will be the order of each stage. It doesn't care about this, but it cares actually about what are the works related to this phase. Uh, like he said, example now, as example to get the, the vacuum, he must take it out of the closet, plug it to the wall, and but those tasks together, in this um, phase, the work breakdown, we don't care too much about which is first, which come first from these uh, activities and what comes second. But actually, this is the concern of the schedule, which comes next to the 
putting the task or break down uh, the breakdown the work. So first the breakdown, then after that the scheduling. And this is so we do the breakdown first, then we go for the scheduling of the activities after this. I want to get a I I uh, I recommend this video for you, my dear students, because it's very simplify simplifying and it's working. You can go to it and watch it once or twice again whenever you can. So that will help you so much to get because it's very simple in saying token simple and giving very nice examples so that it can uh, uh, be useful for you also to for you to remind it and retrieve it and memorize it okay across here is that the work breakdown structure is designed to capture all of the tasks involved with the project don't get bogged down by thinking sequentially at this point just identify the major tasks involved with the project and then break those down the typical work breakdown structure will have three to six levels and it might look something like this. On the chart here, you see that at the top, we have what is called a program. The program is one level above a project. A program, for example, would be the building of a water treatment plant. And that program would be made up of many different projects that have to be completed to complete the program. So as you see, the one program is divided into many uh, projects. And each project will be divided into tasks. And each task will be divided into subtasks. And each subtask will be divided into work packages. And the work package also will be subdivided into level of efforts. And those, this is the uh, work breakdown structure. Okay, let's see. So the second level of our diagram would be the project, and then the project is made up of tasks, which would be the third level. And under tasks, we have subtasks, and then below that we have the work package. And below the work package, we would have the level of effort required to complete those work packages, and so on. So you can see that we're just breaking it down, breaking it down, and further breaking it down until we get to a point to where it can't be subdivided anymore. And you can break the project task down as far as you need to in order for you to be able to properly manage the task, to properly estimate the time required to complete the task, and to properly estimate the cost involved with completing the task. And again, some tasks will have multiple levels, while others will only have a single level. It just depends on what the task involves. There are some basic guidelines you should follow when developing your work breakdown structure. And these include, you stop breaking down work when you reach a low enough level to do an estimate of the desired accuracy. Uh, work breakdown structure. There are guidelines. He's talking about the guidelines. Uh, stop breaking down work when you reach a low enough level to do an estimate of the desired accuracy. So. Like we said, we reach to a point where it is not, um, you cannot div subdivide the work uh, more than this. It, it, in this point, you are okay, that's fine. Till this moment, we can subdivide it, but now we can sub cannot subdivide the task into subdivisions of task more than the way we reach now. Okay. So if your schedule is broken up into days of work, then you should break down your task to a level that involves one day of work. If you're scheduling by the hour, then stop your breakdown when the tasks are in an hourly range. Secondly, involve those people who must do the work in the planning process. This should go without saying, but those involved with doing the work will have the best idea of what it will take to complete the task. So be sure to get their input. Uh, the, the reason because they are the one who was planned who was working involved in doing the task in determine, determining the task so they will be very they are will they will be the one who will do the work uh, effectively because they shared in it they participate in this work yeah work breakdown structure should be completed before the schedule the work breakdown structure should always be developed. Yes, because we said work break breakdown, work breakdown structures come first, 
then schedule comes after the work breakdown structure. So if you can say in sequences in time or chronologically, then the work breakdown structure comes first, then after this uh, schedule will come the schedule phase. Before the schedule is worked out without trying to identify the sequence of activities. And then fourth, the work breakdown structure doesn't have to be symmetrical. Just because one task is broken down to level six doesn't mean that all tasks in the project have to go down to that level of detail. It's uh, it depends, of course, on the uh, the task itself, the nature of the task itself. It doesn't. It, 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 he won't say it shouldn't be asymmetric. Like uh, this task has been divided into six uh, levels. That you will also other tasks. You have to divide it in six levels. No, it's left based on the type of the task itself. Type of the task itself will determine. Uh, to which level you will stop. Yeah. As example, when the example of cleaning and dusting, so when go down to the last, the final uh, subdivision of the task, doesn't mean that all the stages must be the same. Vacuuming is different than cleaning the curtains, is cleaning different than cleaning the carpets. Each, each uh, uh, task can be div divided into subtasks, which may be, as example, cleaning the carpets. Well, how many levels or subdivisions of cleaning the carpet should take? Only one level that cleaning with vacuuming, that's it. But vacuuming, to find the vacuum, you have to plug it, you have to take it to put its components, and then after that start, Vacuum. Those are three steps. Uh, cleaning the windows or washing the windows, uh, the levels, the subdivision levels, like as example, bringing the water, putting uh, the detergent in the water for cleaning substances, then mix them together with the water, then start to uh, mop the glass. First, clean the glass from the dust or whatever with um, any materials or uh, stuff. Then after that, start to wash the glass. Then after you wash the glass, you have to dry it. These are seven subdivisions, but cleaning the curtain or cleaning or vacuuming the rugs is only one or two levels. So it doesn't mean that all the levels must be the same, no possible that some tasks will require very little breakdown, while others will require much more detail. So work closely with those individuals on your team that tend to think symmetrically and help them to see that asymmetry has a place at the table too. In addition to helping with the estimating process, there are a couple of other good uses for the work breakdown structure. The work breakdown structure is a good way to visually show the scope of the project. Since it lays out all the tasks involved with the project, it's easy to see all that's involved with completing the project. Another good use is for assigning responsibility for tasks involved with the project. Each task to be performed should be assigned to a particular person who is then responsible for its completion. So when you divide the tasks, you will allocate or assign uh, each subdivision of the total task into a specified person based on his specialization and his experience and uh, his uh, willing and his ability to do the task. Okay. Estimating is not an exact science. All projects have a series of variables that make it impossible to get what some people call an exact estimate. There's no so that was about uh, the main task uh regarding the uh, uh what we talk about this is enough in this video thank you so much we'll go back to another video also regarding the scheduling and regarding the uh breakdown work breakdown uh, to watch another video 
about the work breakdown. I prefer to take this video because it's short and at the same time uh, it's very nice because she's talking in very brief. I recommend also this video for you guys. I recommend also this video for you guys because it is very uh, nice and it's very short. Hello, I'm Jennifer Witt, Director of ProjectManager.com. Well, welcome to our whiteboard session today on what is a work breakdown structure. So a lot of times we get questions from uh, the forum and other sources of people calling in really trying to understand what the work breakdown structure is. And there's so much confusion out there because it gets tied into maybe a software tool or other aspects and people can't determine what's the difference between that and the schedule and other parts of the project. So I want to take the time out on this whiteboard session just to clarify what the work breakdown structure is. Well, you know me, I'm big on terms and I like to be clear and go forward on a real definition of terms. So a lot of times you'll see me on the whiteboard sessions reference my good friend Google. Well, in this case, I'm referencing a guide, a guide to the project management body of knowledge by PMI. And this specifically is the fourth edition. You can reference other project management sources of your own that you may use and, and uh, prefer instead, but this is mine. So what PMI in the uh, Guide to the Project Management Body of Knowledge, the PMBOK guide says, or work breakdown structure is a deliverable oriented hierarchical decomposition, so we're breaking something apart, of the work to be executed by the team. So the breakdown is breaking the work, the total work into parts. Like we said, if we will build the building of five stories, then we have to do the ground floor, then the first floor, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, then the fifth. And each one of them is including activities, sub activities or sub tasks, which we will divide to subdivision, subdivision, sub tasks, till we reach to the limit that it cannot be divided anymore, divided anymore. And we will then allocate or assign these works on a specific person in each person in the organization. After we uh, determine those tasks or those subtasks, we divide them. Again, I'm saying uh, in the work breakdown stage or structure, it's not very important the chronological order to be uh, practiced or process. We don't care so much, we care about this in the scheduling, uh, which phase will start and which phase will come next that we care about in the scheduling phase. Okay. To accomplish the project objectives and create the required deliverables. Many times I see the teams uh, get um, confused because they lose track of, they lose essence of why are we doing this project? And specifically, the reason we're doing a project is to produce the deliverables. So this is a very important. So the deliverables for me, uh, this video is very nice and the way she's very organized and very nice in, uh, in her presentation, actually. I recommend this video for you guys. Uh, this, to watch it uh, uh, frequently, so because it's including most of the effects about uh, the work breakdown structure in few minutes. So the what she's saying deliverable. Deliverable means for the end user to finish the thing which you're doing the project and deliver it to the your final end user or consumer. Uh, whatever was the project type, but to finish it and deliver it and reach to the close phase or the closing phase of the project. Okay. Peace. And if you can create a work breakdown structure from the beginning and 
uh, identify the deliverables being produced when, then the, a picture truly is worth a thousand words for not only you, the project manager, but your team. It sets the vision again for the project objectives. So let's take a look at the, the purpose. The purpose again is to organize and define the total scope. So the scope is comprised of the deliverables. So this hierarchical decomposition of the work, uh, it looks like this. Here's a graphical picture. So here's just generically, you can take these, this generic hierarchical structure and begin breaking it down for your own. So here's a project. And in this specific one, uh, you may work on pre, uh, projects that include phases. So there may be a phase one, phase two, or other multiple phases. This one has two phases and a deliverable, a main high-level high deliverable produced. And this also has sub-projects. So this also can include sub-projects that are broken down as well. But if you look at phase one and break down this, this has two deliverables beneath the phase. So it's producing two main deliverables. And so we look at what's the work required to produce these deliverables. So we keep breaking it down. We break it down to the work, the work, the work to be executed. So work is executed by work packages. So this deliverable one is broken down to other sub deliverables and which are broken down eventually to work packages. And remember your team members are completing work packages that produce these deliverables. And so the team members, when you reach to this stage, each subdivision of these, the whole project, which like here as example, uh, one of the subtasks or uh, the subtasks should be delivered into the uh, your teamwork based on specialization to do those subtasks. And this is what she is saying at this point. Again, this can continue to be broken down. And like you see here, it doesn't mean that all levels have to be symmetric when it's going to be the task down. No, uh, it depends on the type of the activity or the uh, division which you uh, or the object which you are going to divide into sub uh, tasks or sub objects. So it depends on the type of task itself can be more uh, subdivided or no. Uh, so it doesn't mean that uh, three stage, like we said example in the example before about cleaning, about the dust, about dusting, about cleaning the windows, about cleaning the vacuum, vacuuming the floor. All those tasks uh, are not having sub tasks same like and here five five subtasks so that means that here will be five subtasks no no it differ from uh, a product or uh, a project to another project okay uh, that was about dividing the subtasks and this is what we know now about uh, the breakdown of the subtasks and that's very well so you are very well now uh, at this point, then we will go back to our slides and complete the project schedule. We said first we do the work breakdown, then we go to the project schedule. Uh, Multicanal reporting mechanism, this also we had it. Then we will move into now the risk management and know what do we mean by the word risk. So risk identification, risk means the gap between <clears throat> the actual results and the planned. The gap between them is risk. You planned to produce 10 cell phones. You produced only seven. Then the risk is three. The planned minus the actual performance, 10 minus seven will give you three. Risk is a kind of... Uh, Unexpected events happen in the environment of uh, your decision uh, area or environment. Some unexpected things which you do not expect 
uh, start with natural disasters and uh, technical errors and human errors. All those are kind of risk. Okay, what can we, what went wrong? Analyze the risk, determine the likelihood that it will occur. And this is what we will study. We will put something is called states of nature. And we will put a probability distribution for each stage. The damage it will do if it does occur. We will use also to do something we call it what if analysis. Then we will see the criteria in which we would, what, we, what kind of uh, criteria we will use in making decision. Prioritize risk by probability and impact. Like as example, I will say, in case of it is inflation in the economy, I will have revenues of $100,000 with a probability of 30%. In case, like that way, in case of there is a depression or recession or deflation in the economy, I will have uh, profits of $10,000 with a probability of 50% and so on. We will study this in the math part, in the models, including the decision tree and including the expected value. Uh, we will study all of them uh, regarding managing the risk in a project. So just I'm giving an idea now about it, then we will go back to it in the decision tree. Develop plan and monitor. So we will arrange and check based on this, we will put more than one scenario. So we won't use only one scenario, we would use more than one scenario, we will call it what if analysis in the case of this situation happen, I will do like this, in the case the situation happen, I will do like this and so on. Okay. This was the risk. And I will stop here actually for around uh, uh, and say only because we cannot exceed this without knowing what do we mean by the word risk. Define risk and its types. So you also tell me what are the types of risk. We have uh, nature risks. We have human error risks or technical risks. All those are, then we will see how we will deal with the risk, how we will deal with the types of risk which we have. Okay, time for this question is around five minutes. Well, you can also answer like I told you before, please. And you can send me the answer here on Google, on the shared box. You can send your answers to the shared box. Okay, okay. That's very fine. So this was about the risk. Uh, now, when we go to the next slide, the risks identification, where these, the possible risks, of the technology, what will happen? Like those are the types of risk and what this risk will lead to. Those are the types and this is it leads to. Technology, the database used possible risk in the system cannot process as many transactions per second as expected. So some of your transactions will not be done based on or something happened to your laptop or something happened to your programming system, or you had hackers or spam or whatever, or viruses. So those are all possible risks. A software components is that should be reused contain defects that limit their function, functionality. So those are will affect your software system. This is the technology. Risk comes from the technology side or aspect. People, it is impossible to recruit stuff with the skills required. 
always because like we said before you have a uh, cost constraints so you won't be able to bring exactly the people whom you need to work with you uh, because of lack of resources lack or shortage of money usually the very high skillful people they take a very high pay if you are not able to afford this high pay, then you will be satisfied with the poor level of performance or non-skilled people or limited skill people to achieve your tasks. Okay. Require training. So because the people, okay, how I will uh, deal with the risk of the people I will deal with that kind of risk with training the people very well. If I train them very well, that will be fine. So we have also for risk organizational risk, which means the organization is restructured. So the different mean uh, management are responsible for the project. Organizational financial problems force reduction in the project budget. So there are some problems, software problems. So there is also the financial problems will let you shrink your budget. You won't do all what you want because of the needs, the financial needs. Okay. If you want to hire 10 persons, no, you won't be able to hire 10 skillful people because of shortage in the resources. You will hire only four or three. Okay tools, the code generated by case tools is insufficient. Okay, requirements. Change to requirements that require major design network or propose customers fail to understand the impact of requirement changes. Estimations, mistaken the estimations. A time required to develop the software underestimated. You didn't estimate the time to uh, to to like to update your software, you put set a wrong time to do that while it takes more. Uh, the rate of defect repair is un underestimated also. You didn't have like, like uh, repairing any problem with the system you estimate it in a wrong way. You said it will take another one, one hour and it might last for a few days. The size of the software is underestimated also. Uh, like you don't know what you will do regarding this uh, estimations or the, as example, you didn't put a time estimation right for these problems. Okay. Uh, shall stop here for the moment and we will complete in the next video. Thank you so much.